Hello, Aquas. What's good? You don't mind if I lube up a little bit, do you? Yeah. If you clicked on that thumbnail, you know where you reached, Aqua. This is Readings by Marvelous Madame. I am. Oh, Marvelous One, Marvelous Madame in the Flesh. Welcome back to the Marvelous Show. I hope that Libra season treated you well. And I hope that this Scorpio season finds you well and in good spirits, Aqua. Okay. If you are new here with me, hello, hello. If you are returning, welcome back. And if you are subscribed to my marvelous bunch of people, my tribe. And, okay. Aqua, this is going to be your November. Happy November 2018. How does Bay feel about you for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Okay. All right. First and foremost, thank you guys for your likes, your shares, your subscribes. Thank you so much for booking me for your private readings. If OK, it was a pleasure to connect with each and every one of you guys and you guys that have come back to book me. I appreciate it. OK, we are still going to be keeping that same energy and running a contest. OK, I am going to be giving away 5, 10, 11 readings to commemorate the month of November. OK, um, if you are interested in, re in winning a reading with me, then what you would do is you will go inside of the description below. There are four links to my social media platforms. You're going to like the video that brought you to me. You're going to subscribe to the tribe. Thank you. You are also going to go through each one of those if you have all of those and like and follow all of those pages. Screenshot that. Email me at readings at marvelousmadam.com. Com, okay, and in the subject line free reading, I will go ahead and send you a confirmation email within 24 to 48 hours of receipt of your original email and send you the link and everything to get you on the books. Okay, my system is self serving, I do not book for you, you do it yourself. So get familiar with my system. Okay, secure checkout, I take um, all secure methods of payment. If you prefer PayPal, I got that. I also take cash if that's what you want to do. Um, that that booking with cash is a little bit different, okay? Um, but all of that is out on the scheduler when I send it to you. Now, the other half of that aqua is going to be that um, for all of my people that come to me for the first time, you come across my, my readings and you rock with the energy. Um, when you uh, have the courage to share with me, Aqua, um, I may just randomly go through the comments and select you for a personal reading because based on what you've shared with me, I feel compelled and I connect with that and I would love to read for you. The slots are available, so I will be doing both, okay? Now, this is that part in the show where I let you know if you care to skip this marvelous intro, the reading will start and it will be linked down below. When I pull this card was when the reading will start, so there's no confusion, okay? So, we are going to go ahead and talk about what's happening in the sky in your astrology snippet for November. You already know how we rock. The uh, How Does Bay Feel About You series is the only series that will have this intro besides the birthday bonus reads, okay? So, if you care to skip this marvelous intro, sorry about that, the reading will start down below and I will link that for you, the time. Everybody else that know how I get down, let's go ahead and start. The first thing we're going to do, Aqua, is we are going to go ahead and talk about what happened on Halloween Day. And yes, I'm going to continue to do some shuffling because um, I did shuffle off camera, but I want to shuffle while I'm talking. I like to fondle my cards. Let's rock. So two things happened. Halloween Day, okay? Mercury went into Sagittarius. And Venus, who was retrograde, still went and slid out of Scorpio and went into Libra, okay? So we started off the month, okay, with those two things happening, okay? Now, what's going to happen next is on November the 6th, Uranus is going to enter in the sign of Aries, all right? The next day, the new moon in Scorpio on November the 7th. You're going to be setting intentions with the new moon energy, okay? 
I will go live across my social media platform more than likely to discuss uh, that new moon's energy, so forth and so on, okay? Also, on November the 8th, the next day, Jupiter is going to enter into the sign of Sagittarius. So at that point, by the 8th, we got two things happening in Sagittarius, Mercury and Jupiter. So what that means to me, because I know that Jupiter is the planet of gifts, luck, gifts and luck and expansion. And I also know that if we're going to be communicating like a Sagittarius, then um, any presentations that you want to give, anything you're doing on social media, it looks like that would be a good time for you to be successful in that. OK. All right. Anything that has been stagnant, Aqua, will move forward with uh, Jupiter going into Sag, okay? Now, on November the 15th, Mars is going to enter Pisces, all right? On November the 16th, two things happening, okay? On the 16th, Venus is going to be going direct in the sign of Libra where it is currently retrograde and, okay, and... Mercury goes retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, I told you at the beginning of the month that Mercury uh, moved on the Halloween day, that Mercury went and moved into Sag. Well, it's going to be retrograding that day, okay? So, two things happening on that particular day. Be mindful of that. On the 22nd, now the sun is going to enter Sagittarius, okay? Happy birthday, Sagittarius, in advance. Please look out for your birthday bonus reading. You already know you're going to get one, okay? Also, the next day, on the 23rd, there's going to be the full moon in Gemini, okay? That should be a welcoming moon for you. That is your element, aqua, okay? Air, all right? Last but not least, we have... Neptune that is going to finally go direct in the sign of Pisces. So we got some stuff in Pisces this month. We got Neptune going direct in Pisces, and then we're going to have Mars in Pisces, okay? Um, so we're going to have a lot of Earth going on. So just keep that in mind. I'm sorry, a lot of water. Um, we're going to have fire. So, you know, find out where these planets and where this, uh, the, where, this will affect you and your personal planet. If you need help with that, you can go ahead and book a reading, add on the crystal consultation, and we can go ahead and talk about your personal chart, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started now. Thank you so much for sitting through that. Let's get started with your reading, Aqua. So tapping into your energy, I did feel some codependency. Healing family issues, wounds, past things of that nature. There is transformative energy going on right now in Scorpio season. And um, Aquarius, you guys are not exempt, okay? Let's go ahead and prepare and get your card. I'm going to time stamp it right now to save me some time tonight. Rock with your girl. It's been a long day. Universe, spirit, angels, and my guides, give me the love energy. Whoa, that surrounds my Aquarius. I'm going to... You got three. All right. And yes, forgiving and learning. Absolutely. All right. I missed that. So now I got to watch it anyway. See what I'm talking about? Because the cards just flew out. All right, Aqua, your energy is calling into three. Getting to know one another. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Okay. Forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments and wedding. This, this situation involves marriage. Don't get thrown off by the wedding card. If it involves marriage, it doesn't necessarily mean that the marriage is happy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not um, that you're not separated. It means that it involves marriage. So don't take it too literally. But if it does involve marriage, congratulations if it's happy, okay? Um, neighboring energies, love yourself first. Flirt. Release your ex. I go three back. These uh, could be contributing energies, give or take, once we tap into what's going on. Um, those of you who are still with me that are new, 
Um, I pull the Romance Angel Oracle and five cards with the bottom of the deck that indicates how your partner feels about you. Let's get started. Universe Spirit Angels and my guides, how does Aquarius's partner feel about them? Aquarius. All right. That's good positive energy. How does Aquarius partner feel about them? How does Aquarius partner feel about them? Cross washers. We also pull the Aquarius energy and find out how they feel about you in the same spread, okay? A twofer. Show me, spirit. Show me. All right. Show me. How does Aquarius's partner feel about them that tried to come over? All right. You guys could be connecting. Oh, two. Yeah, that two of swords was at the bottom. This king of pentacles was also uh, popped out when I was tapping in and pre-shuffling off camera and tapping and meditating on your energy. All right. Will of fortune. Will of fortune was reversed. This is your energy. I do not read reversals, but I do call them out whenever a reversal comes through. That just means that the, the same energy exists, but... It's operating very low, a low vibrational wheel of fortune, which means that everything it means upright on its ass. So something that you're doing, Aquarius, right now, your partner, um, you could be doing again. This is your partner's energy, which was trying to come out like this. So your partner is not letting go of the fact that this relationship, according to the cards, Pretty much seem to be over. Let's go ahead and get the neighboring energies first. Somebody wants to come in with fast communication. Someone isn't happy. I feel like this is a breakup. The emperor is in reverse, but we're not going to take him. Um, this is my five of swords, neighboring or contributing energy. This is my page of cups. Okay. And this is my Knight of Swords. Someone wants to come in with brash communication. Someone wants to possibly, this is um, your partner's uh, neighboring or contributing energies, by the way, wants to come in with brash and harsh communication with this Knight of Swords, driving home the fact that there is a message possibly about love Offering that cup of love, offering some type of emotion, offering some feelings about something that has been going on with this five of swords. There has definitely been some conflict um, surrounded around something. So that is the neighboring or contributing energies. Okay. They are operating in a very low vibrational wheel of fortune right now. They are not allowing the situation to take its course. They are in a very lack mentality, Aquarius. They refuse to allow nature and the universe to take its course so you guys can move into this temperance. So this temperance I see is here. This is Sagittarius energy. Um, I feel like, hold on, come on. I feel like, Aquarius, your partner is very deceptive. They're messy, it looks like. Now, intuitively, this is screaming to me, I don't want to let go. But I don't see a good enough reason here why they would want to hold on. There is nothing here other than the fact that they just want to stay married, possibly. I don't see enough cups of love here. Or anything other than this King of Pentacles, and I and I don't know yet because I see the Five of Pentacles. So Sagittarius energy is here. The Wheel of Fortune is here, indicating that um, operating in a low Wheel of Fortune, meaning that they're um, very reluctant to allow the universe to move these cycles and get this wheel turning. Okay, 
I am going to read it up right, but I'm going to give you the same energy, but a very low vibrational. So the hope, healing and optimism is here. Something you're being tempered, um, not necessarily the star patience and moderation. They really is very slow to move into this energy. And the reason why is because they're operating in a very low vibrational um, will of fortune right now. On one hand, they're looking at the food. So I feel like they may be looking at this situation with the with um, the glass half empty and the glass half full. That's fine. But I feel like they're operating in a very being feeling feeling left out in the cold. Um, on one hand, I'm enthusiastic about something here. But on the other hand, I feel very betrayed, left out in the cold with this five of pentacles. There's some type of decision that their energy is pulling down. Two of swords. I don't, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Remember when I said that they were not allowing, this is the wheel of fortune in reverse. They're operating, although I'm showing it to you upright, they are operating in a very low vibrational will. And because they're here, this is the two of swords. They're refusing to move forward and allow this situation between you guys to take its course. And that is going to slow the temperance down. OK, this person, I believe this is either how they're viewing you, which is the king of pentacles. They look at you as someone who they built with when I see these pinnacles and the way that these cards are being laid and I see this wedding card, you can possibly be married to this person. But listen, they're not going to allow, let me flip this upside down. They're not going to allow the forgiving and the learning focus because they are operating in a low vibrational will of fortune energy as their energy. And then they're stuck avoiding what needs to be done. They refuse mentally to accept the fact that this whatever this is, is over with. I feel like on one hand, they're excited about something, but it seems like they're excited about. what they can gain. Interesting. This is very interesting. Neighboring or contributing energies. Possibly the fact that this person can't communicate worth hell. They want to rush in. They don't know how to speak about how they're feeling. That's the reason why they're avoiding with the two of swords. And they're the fact that you are possibly trying to move forward in temperance. They're not appreciating that and it's making them feel left out in the cold. OK, again, they're not allowing this situation to flow the way that it was intended to flow. OK, again, could include them really wanting to come and give you a message of love and let and, and deliver some type of apology. This is delivering some type of emotion in its infancy state or this involves children. Could be a little bit of both. Don't know. But it's always some conflict. It is always conflict, and that is the reason why you just want to compromise, balance the scales, and get the hell out of Dodge. I'm feeling like they don't want to allow that to happen. This is what I'm feeling like. We're going to go ahead and tap into your energy. You want to forgive and learn. I feel like there is some revealing that needs to be done, but I do not think that this situation is going to get on the good foot. They look at you as the king of pentacles. You know, that's a very positive card. That pinnacle right there, they're focused on it. And I believe that represents your relationship. But I don't see, but I also see the, the king of pentacles and the five of pentacles. So there's been some type of financial loss, possibly. I feel like this is a marriage. I feel like this situation does involve a wedding or marriage. The card is wedding, but at the bottom, this situation involves marriage. I feel like this is a marriage. This person definitely is operating upside down in the wheel, which is um, very hard for the wheel to turn. Nature is not going to take the course. Things are not going to get to the temperance state with you guys where you can maybe get to know each other possibly. Um and forgive and learn so you both can move on and your temperance. But this person 
is avoiding and not allowing it to happen. That is what I'm seeing. Um, on one hand, um, the fool is here, which indicates that they're willing to stick it out. But I don't feel like with these other deceptive energies here in their um, in their energy, and especially the neighboring energy, that it's coming from a good place. So this fool is, you know how they say, oh, the fool is a good card. Not in, not in this case. Not in this case. Before I pull your energy, let me show you again. Just look at the imagery on the fool. So you got one damn leg perched off the uh, cliff. You you got, you look at all of that. You know, and I feel like when people try to pull um, the uh, negative out of the fool, it's no, it, this is definitely, um, this is definitely where we would do that because the surrounding cards on how this person feels. I mean, I feel like this is an unpredictable fool. This is the, it, it, this, in this particular case, this is the fool. <laughs> because I feel like this energy is very unpredictable with the way that the rest of the cards are going. Um, there's just too much deception surrounding this fool. And I feel like this um, is not, um, uh, this is not coming from a good place, Aqua. How does Aquarius feel? All right, you're definitely manifesting getting away. Oh yes. I knew, I knew your card was going to come out. The star hope, healing and optimism. You're operating in your element right now. So you're trying to wish this person away from you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The three of wands. I love it. I love it. No love. How does Aquarius feel about partner yet? Yeah. You better talk about it. Aquarius. One more card, please. Aqu yes. Aquarius, you are the magician. Woo, baby, yield that sword. Yield it. All right. You guys are mirroring one another. That is the energy this month. All of my readings. Let's go ahead and go into your neighboring or contributing energies. The bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. In the near past. Future neighboring energy is the two of swords, um, the six of pentacles, and the hangman. You were definitely one in balance, unsure of how to get to where you are now, and refusing, uh, you were unsure to how to get there. These two are the counterpart. The hangman is the major arcana. And the two of swords is the is basically the exact same thing in the minor. I believe. Sort of the same thing. Okay. But different. Okay. This is you one in balance, the six of pentacles. And you're trying to come up with a way. Let me hold on. Because I love this. You guys are definitely mirroring one another. And I'm going to talk about how you feel. I love it. Okay. I want you to look at the imagery here. So we have a blindfold. Now, remember, your partner also pulled about the two. Double two is choices. I feel like this is the, the, the dissolution of something that you guys were doing together. First and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about this two of wands. I'm sorry, two of swords. Now, we know that that's you operating in your element. Um, I feel as if you had some things that you had to do. Obviously. The main thing that you had to do was to figure out what you, how you wanted to proceed and make how you wanted to proceed forward, ending the relationship as painless as possible. How you could mentally, because, and when I say painless, you're, I'm not about this other person. Painless for you, Aqua. You wanted balance. You wanted reciprocity. You did not want the rah-rah. And you were enlightened because that's the bottom of the hangman. 
okay? And then here you're blindfold. So on one hand, you're enlightened, knowing exactly what to do, just not knowing whether to take the red or the blue pill. But then on the other hand, okay, so this is the balance in the middle. And then on one hand, you know what to do. You don't know which way this, which way to go to get to the decision, like which which road a path to take. This is you going back and forth with yourself, knowing that you have to do this. So there's two options. On one hand, you would rather avoid it and not think about it. And then on the other hand, you know what you have to do. These cards to me mirror that energy. Okay, so let me just say, the main lesson in the hangman is that we have to let go and surrender, okay? But if you look at the two of swords, okay, if you look at the two of swords, it's also the exact same thing. It's about the barriers that you put between yourself and the ones that you create. So on one hand, this is a closed heart. Okay. And then on the other hand, you have to let go. So I think that it was, although you did not have any emotions regarding this particular person, because I don't see that there is any damn love. I see that you want compromise. The, the person wants compromise, but in a deceptive energy. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let that go because I can keep talking about that all night. All right. Your energy and how you're feeling. The bottom of the deck. Your main energy is the truth, the clarity, the overcoming, the mental adversity that kept you stuck in this eight of sorts mentality, blindfolded, in fear, not knowing how and when to move. You come out of that. This is how you're operating. Those were contributing um energies that got you to this okay so don't so, so follow me on that okay so you are the magician you are manifesting the hell away from this person and then you have two major arcanas in your energy you show up as the star hope healing and optimism and you are manifesting you're out you have all of the tools in your arsenal to manifest the outcome that you want, Aquarius, and you are looking at the horizon. You have these three wands. You are passionate and you are planning. Okay. You were operating in a state of fear, but you are no longer there, honey, because this is what you decided to do. Now, don't take this as the melancholy card because. Um, you know, this is someone that I was watching today did bring up a good point. This, this six of swords, you don't see the face. And a lot of times that can indicate that there is some sadness. I don't necessarily think that you're sad, though, because you got the star here. I think you're ready to just be you're just ready to be done with this because this indicates what you want to do with your future. You're ready to plan. You're ready to you're looking out on the horizon and you're planning your future by yourself and you're doing it. You're manifest. You're not just planning. You're manifesting. Your hope, healing, and optimism for your future. Look at if you put all three of these together. Okay, you are manifesting your hope, healing, and optimism passionately for your future, and you're ready to move forward. You have every card, every tool right here in your arsenal to manifest that and to get there healing, to get there in a healed state. To one day want to get remarried, to move away from things that no longer serve you. This could possibly be a journey over water. I love saying that because the car has water and I like water. But your cards, um, your surrounding cards are very indicative of the fact that you have finally put the mental anguish to rest. And I already know that because these two cards led you to this ace. Look at that. The six and the eight. So you were moving away from things that no longer serve you mentally. And this is you bound and trapped by fear and blindfolded. But you come out of that. And this is where you end up. So you find that truth and clarity. And you are yielding that sword. Some of you guys can be connecting with a Gemini. Because they also had the same thing. This is beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. There's definitely going to be a lot of forgiving and learning. Um, your partner has the temperance, but I believe that that's very deceptive. You guys are mirroring each other with the two of swords, which I don't know where it went. It's in your neighbor. It's in, it was in your neighboring energy. Okay. You were at the two of swords. There was a time where you decided to completely block it out, thinking that it would go away. It didn't. And you move past the hurt. You came out of being bound by fear. Remember, your partner is operating in a upside down wheel and they refuse to let this take its course. So what I can tell you is, is that um, I this deception that there's going to be some truth telling with the getting to know one another, not in a way of that you guys are um, new, like brand new in a relationship. I feel like you're they're going to try to communicate their temperance and you're going to try to communicate your star. Follow me. Um, they want compromise, but you want hope, healing, and optimism for the future without them. Okay? They are trying to possibly, and this is what I'm thinking, with this star and the fool, they're not wanting to let this go. And don't let the smooth taste fool you, Aqua, just because they haven't said anything. They don't want to let go of this connection because of they either look at you as money, uh, built something with you with that pinnacle. They don't want to let this pinnacle go ahead. It doesn't have anything to do with love. What do I say? What do I mean when I say they don't want to let the pinnacle go? You are their security. You heard it here first. They don't want to let you go because of that. You're done with this. You are completely done with this. And you are trying to manifest them the hell away from you. And when you look on the horizon at your future, they are not in it. You are by yourself in this card, okay? And you're okay because you have the truth and clarity that you need because what's been holding you has only been in your head. Action-wise, I think you always been the magician. You always been ready to do this. But I think what's been, what was holding you back more so was all mental. But it's over with. It's over with for that. Okay? Woo! I'm going to pull one more card because I want to clarify this wedding. I feel like this pinnacle indicates that you guys have went through some type of breakup possibly. Yep. Hold on. Temperance again. So... Sagittarius energy here, that is temperance. I don't know whether you can see that on the bottom, but that's the temperance card. So I feel like both of you guys really want the compromise. You are compromising. High priestess. You are uh, really wanting to compromise for the right reasons. You want hope, healing, and optimism. You don't want anything bad to happen to this person. You want temperance. You want, you know, compromise and some type of balance as it pertains to this wedding. I believe that um, some of you guys are having problems in your marriage and you're still married. Then that's what's going on. Um, some of you guys are getting a divorce. Um, it just it, it definitely looks in their energy like they're that this is done. It, it's a breakup. It's over with. Um, but not enough cards to let me know. There's definitely a disillusion of something. But the tower isn't here. You know, it's a lot of cards that could have like really nailed it in the coffin to say that this is a breakup. So I just feel like there's going to be some balance and some compromise and some healing as far as a situation that involves marriage. That is that. And of course, you're you're we got the temperance twice. OK, so that is letting me know that that's what's happening there. And Aquarius, this has been your reading. I certainly hope that it resonated uh, like, share, and subscribe to The Marvelous Tribe. Let me know how this resonated with you. Um, I certainly hope to see you guys here in about seven days when we examine the energy that's surrounding you in love for the top of the month. Like, share, subscribe to The Marvelous Tribe. If you're interested in winning a free reading, you know how to get in contact with me. I will see you guys back here tomorrow for the next three. I'm excited. Looks like there's been a lot of mirroring going on 
in every single reading, okay? And that's beautiful. So um, I will see you guys soon. I'm up out of here. Bye, Aqua.